anyway, um, what Larry's got me down here to do today is to, is to do a Japanese style furnace. Now there's not much difference between what I'm doing here and what you'll refer to or hear talked about, a Roman stack furnace or a Viking stack furnace. Um, matter of fact, I'm kind of hoping some of the Virginia guys, are any of you guys here yet? They scare me, i got to be smarter for them. Well, they've been doing it a lot longer, and, and it's not bad stuff, but what I'm going to talk about is something that's a little bit different because the end result of this product is steel. Tomorrow, we're going to be burning for sure. Today, we're going to be building up the base of the stack, and here's a model of my furnace. We're going to start out, and this is going to be about a two-foot two foot tall clay tube. On the inside, it's going to be tapered on two walls and then flat on the other ends. The tapered walls are going to catch the twirs. And I use, in this case, we're going to use three of them. We're going to have three twirs on each side. And this is going to be a pipette that just fires this air deep into the fire. And we kind of hope that this creates a bunch of turbulence and a real nice hot spot on the bottom. And then everything else burns up from there. The rest of this is going to be charcoal. And then we put a layer of powder on it, and then charcoal, and a layer of powder, and charcoal, and powder, and charcoal. We'll start out with a whole tube full of charcoal. We'll let that burn for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, until all this stuff is nice and hot. Everything's cooking at temperature. And then we're going to start layering the iron in. Well, as the charcoal down here in the bottom gets consumed, and it's almost a zero ash fire at those temperatures, this stuff will start to simply slide down. The layers of the cake will just sort of keep being consumed by this engine down in the bottom. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Now once this bloom starts to consolidate, these drips and drops and everything else just starts to weld onto itself. And that's kind of what you're going to see. As this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it may start choking off our tubes and stuff. And you'll see us cleaning out the holes and Maybe four hours into it, we'll probably get interested in getting into one of the slag arches in the bottom and tapping it out. What I'd like to do, because that all the sand and the crud and some of the inside walls on the clay fire are going to melt down on top of this stuff and turn to glass. Now the nice thing about it is you can stand here and just shovel charcoal in the top of it and you get steel out the bottom at the end of the day. The last time we did this, we had a 68 pound blue. Oh, what's this? Uh, Orishigane Tamahagane Flattened Tamahagane. Where'd you get this from? In a model. Oh. All right. Well, I can't show you any American-made stuff. This is the real deal, guys. This this comes out of the, this is the Tamahagane from Japan, and you can see that it's speculated. It's got a bunch of holes in it. My forge in that later, Rick. If we hit this with a hammer when Rick's not looking, we can bust it open and look on the inside, <laughs> and it's full of holes. I hate to bust up a guy's library. I take good care of his books when he lets me have them. But you can see that this doesn't look anything like a knife, does it? Okay? It's got to be flat, heated up, flattened out. It's got to have all the silicates and the crud and the dirt driven off of it. And this is basically just a cleaning process. All that myth and magic and mystery about folding and welding and folding and welding, it's just to make a homogenous bar. Okay? Yeah, patterns are there. But that's just more of an interesting aesthetic accident than something that they desire. What's that little bed of carbon at the bottom do? Just helps with your atmosphere. Yeah, hit. atmosphere control for the most part. And then it'll burn it, out. Theoretically, okay. it's also a place for the bloom to expand. This thing's going to want to get bigger, and if it gets bigger upper, it can block off the twirls which will come in through this hole. So we give it a place that it can burn down into, so as it gets bigger, it's going to get heavier and sink further down into the fire. Right. 
kind of talking about this, you know, it's like the, you, know, you got to think about the tribal guys, you know, the drums, you know, they're into the rhythms of things. That was their timing. When they got that right every time, then it was consistent every time. Love charcoal. That so far, cowboy oh. brand is heading to the Yeah, I've seen, we're safe that. Open that one. Pieces play around. Yeah, actually, I, there's two bags there. Those you got to Yeah, those should be nice. We want those for the very end. We don't want to be a good piece. Yeah. Right, this gap is Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Once you can see on top, just start peeling them out and away from the fire. It's still underneath the jerk. They're a little short of the Can you get them to roll? Yeah. They're stuck. You're going to have to give them a little bit of a tap with that fire. Good. <laughs> it looks better, I swear. It's holding the heat in one big mess uh, like this. Yeah. Do you know what you did? Solid Sam. <laughs> we built the furnace a little different and quit, and we quit trying to save material. It's like you were saying. We, we built it with the whole idea of the furnace being sacrificial. Built it this time really super traditional. Uh -huh. yeah.